In part A, we are supposed to be finding the area that is enclosed by this curve and the x-axis. So the first thing that we should try to do is to draw the graph. So we're going to make use of our graphing calculator to draw the graph. I have already done this. Let me show you my graph. If, let's say this is the y-axis and here is the x-axis. Then the graph is going to look something like this. Okay, turning point, then coming back down here. This is when x is equal to minus pi of minus 1 over 2, and this is when x is equal to 1 over 2. Here is when x is equal to 1, and this is the graph of y is equal to square root of 1 minus 4x squared. So the question requires us to find the area that is enclosed by the curve, which is this curve, and the x-axis. So the area that we are looking at is going to be this portion here which means that in order for us to find this area, we are going to make use of integration and specifically integrating it from minus 1 over 2 all the way until 1 over 2 of this, which is square root of 1 minus 4x squared. So in order for us to integrate this, according to the hint that is given to us by the question, we are supposed to use this as a substitution. So x is going to be replaced by u. Specifically, x is going to be replaced by half sine u. So this is the value of x. I'm going to replace this by u, which means that when x is equal to minus half, that means half sine u, this is equal to minus half. So sine u, this is equal to minus one. This tells us that u is going to be equal to minus pi over two. So this minus half is going to be replaced by minus pi over two. And then when x is equal to this over here, when x is equal to half, that means half sine u is also going to be equal to half. So sine u is going to be equal to 1. This tells us that u is going to be equal to positive pi over 2. So I'm going to replace this by pi over 2. I'm going to be replacing all the x. So this, I'm going to be replacing it by x squared, which is going to be 1 quarter sine squared u. So let me write it down here, 1 quarter sine squared u. And this dx, I'm also going to be replacing. So to replace dx, let's try to find out what is dx du. dx du is equal to half cosine u. So dx is going to be replaced by half cosine u. So this half cosine u, then du. So this half, let's just bring it off the integration notation to simplify the integral. So we will have this integrating from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 of square root of, this is going to be 1 minus sine square u, and we will have just a cosine u here. And what is 1 minus sine square u? This is going to become cosine square u. So square root of cosine square u is going to be equal to cosine u. So this will be half and from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. So this thing here will become square root of cosine square u, which will become cosine u, then multiply by cosine u. So cosine u multiplied by cosine u is going to be cosine square u. So it is going to be half here, integrating from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 of cosine square u du. So cosine square, we are going to try to make use of trigonometric identity because by itself, there's no way for us to integrate it. So to use trigonometric identity, let's make use of this. Let's make use of cosine 2a because cosine 2a is 2 cosine square a minus 1. So it gives me another version of cosine square a, which is going to be cosine 2a plus 1 divided by 2. So let's replace this we will have a half integration from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. And this, let's replace it by cosine 2a, or cosine 2u, plus 1 divided by 2. Okay, so this 2, I'm going to take it out again to simplify the integral. So we have a 1 quarter. So we are going to be integrating just from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 of cosine 2u plus 1. Okay, this is easy to integrate. Let's carry out the process of integration. So integrating cosine 2u is going to be equal to half sine 2u. 
then integrating one is going to be u so from minus pi over two to pi over two so we cannot substitute the values in this is going to be equal to one quarter let's substitute the values in so the first one will be substituting this in it is going to be half sine 2 times pi over 2 is going to be equal to pi so this will become 0 and plus pi over 2 okay then minus away let's substitute this in so it is going to be equal to half sine 2 times minus pi over 2 is going to be minus pi and this will become 0 also and this will be minus pi over 2 so we have this this will be one quarter multiply by this this is going to be zero plus pi over two minus zero then plus another pi over two so here we have a pi pi multiplied by pi over four our answer for part a is pi over four in this part we are going to try to use integration again to find the exact area of a region and this time is the region that is bounded by the curve the x-axis and two vertical lines x is equal to minus pi and pi over 2. So just like what we did in the previous part, the first thing that we want to do is to sketch the graph. So let me do a version for you here. I've already done my sketch. This is the x-axis based on what I have on my graphing calculator. The graph is going to look something like this. Okay, turning point, then coming back here, it will curl up. Okay, that's the other parts of the graph, okay, but I'm going to be just sketching the part that is uh, of our concern here because we are concerned with only the part that is from x is equal to minus pi all the way until the part where x is equal to pi over 2. So the region that is bounded by this curve, y is equal to e to the power of x sine x is going to be the region that is here, okay, a region that is below the x-axis and this region here. And because we have a region that is below the x-axis, so if I were to be integrating it from minus pi all the way until zero, it's going to be a negative area. So in order for us to find the area of this, we will need to separate this from this, adding a negative in front of the integration notation from minus pi to zero of this curve e to the power of x sine x will give us the absolute area of this region. Then I'll need to add to this region here, which is going to be integrating from 0 to pi over 2 of e to the power of x sine x. And we are working on two integrals that has the same expression that is inside. So it will be not very efficient if we were to be integrating them separately. Furthermore, if you look at the integral that we are trying to integrate now, we are going to be making use of integration by parts. So it's going to be tedious if I were to you know, do it as two parts because even if I were to do just one, it's going to be really pretty tedious. So to make it a little bit more efficient, I am going to just bring this back. Okay, we are going to do a definite, we are going to do an indefinite integral first. And specifically, we are going to do a, an indefinite integral for this over here. So we're going to try to integrate e to the power of x sine x. Okay, we're going to try to find the result for this. Then I'll just apply it to the two integrals here. Okay, it's going to be a little bit more efficient, but this question is just going to be tedious. So we're going to be making use of integration by parts. So it is this L-I-A-T-E that we are going to be making use of to decide which one to let it be U, which one to let it be DV, DX. So here we have an exponential and we have a trigonometric function. And since trigo comes before exponential, so according to the rule that we have discussed in our theory outline, we're going to let u be equal to t. So it is u is going to be equal to sine x. And dv dx is going to be this e to the power of x. So based on this, du dx, this is going to be equal to cos sine x. And um, this v here is going to be e to the power of x. So this will be uv. So this multiplied by this e to the power of x sine x. Then um, we will minus away integration of v du dx. So it's going to be e to the power of x cosine x. And we will apply integration by parts again. So we have an exponential and we have a trigonometric uh, function here. So applying integration by parts one more time, we're going to be letting u be equal to this time cosine x. And dv dx, let's go for e to the power of x. So du dx is equal to minus sine x and v is e to the power of x. So we can now re-express this again. This is going to be as it is. 
minus away this rewriting it into the integration by parts form it will be uv so it will be e to the power of x cosine x minus integration of v du dx so it's going to be e to the power of x multiplied by minus sine x and this minus let's just take it out of the integration notation combining with the original negative will become positive and here it will be sine x and now the integral has repeated and just like what we have discussed in our theory outline the moment when the integral repeats we're going to bring the integrals over to the same side so on the left hand side we have an integration e to the power of x sine x and on the right hand side we have a minus integration of e to the power of x sine x if i were to bring this over to the left hand side you read this integral plus exactly the same integral combining them together it is going to be equal to two times of integration of e to the power of x sine x is going to be what that is left on the right hand side which is e to the power of x sine x minus e to the power of x cosine x so integration from e to the power of x sine x this is going to be equal to half e to the power of x sine x minus half e to the power of x cosine x and let's not forget that we are doing a indefinite integral so plus c wow if we have not done this it will be so tedious for us to be doing this two times exactly the same two times here right so but because we have now done this it makes it way easier for us to be integrating this because we already have gotten the indefinite integrals result so apply it to a definite integral here minus will still be minus and this is going to be making use of this result it's going to be half e to the power of x sine x minus half e to the power of x cosine x without the plus c applying the definite integral so it will be a, with a lower li limit of minus pi and an upper limit of zero and the same thing goes for this it will be half e to the power of x sine x minus half e to the power of x cosine x from zero to pi over two so minus will be minus if i were to substitute zero in we will have a uh, e to the power of zero which is one sine zero is zero so this will actually become zero let me just write it down minus one over two e to the power of zero is one and cosine zero is one so it's going to be zero minus half then minus away substituting this in it will get us a uh, sine minus pi so sine minus pi is going to be zero so the first one here is going to be zero then we will have a uh, minus one over two e to the power of minus pi cosine minus pi is minus one so we have a minus one minus one times minus one become positive one so let me put it down as a positive here so we have this then plus this other one here this will be substituting this in so we will have a half e to the power of pi over 2 then sine pi over 2 is 1 so it will just be half e to the power of pi over 2 and then substituting this to the second part we will have a cosine pi over 2 which is 0 so this minus 0 then minus away substituting 0 in sine 0 is going to be 0 then minus this will be half e to the power of 0 is 1 cosine 0 is 1 so it's just going to be half so if you were to evaluate this further you're going to get the final answer to be equal to half e to the power of pi over 2 plus half e to the power of minus pi plus 1. In this last part here, we are going to be working on the volume. And it is the volume of this region that we have identified previously that is going to be rotated by 2 pi about the x-axis. So the volume is going to be calculated using integration again. It is going to be pi integrating from the lower limit as pi over minus pi all the way until the upper limit as pi over 2 of this expression here the expression of uh, the curve square and since the question has no restriction to the way that we're going to be presenting our answer we will definitely want to just press it into our calculator to get the answer for this and the answer is going to be 27.3 units cubed mm -hmm.